Check one. Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Viewer question in on the email. This is from Jim. He says, hi Matt. I'm a regular viewer of yours on YouTube and I would love to raise a question. I'm planning to buy a Canon 90D and later on upgrading it possibly to the 7D Mark III. I was having a look at the best lenses for crop sensors. I've seen your video about the best three lenses and most likely I will get the 55 to 250 by Canon and the Sigma 17 to 50 F28 OS HSM. Yet, very interesting thing happened. I found a lens, a uh, Canon lens, the 15 to 85 f 35 to 56 IS USM. I've seen countless amounts of reviews saying that this lens is incredibly well built, IS works tremendously well, and image quality is astonishingly sharp. Plus, on the wider end, you get an extra 2 mils, which especially on the wide side makes a big difference. Despite all the ratings and reviews, nobody has ever included this lens on their list of the best lenses for crop sensors. Therefore, the question I have for you and for the discussion down below your video is, why do you think this lens seems to be actually uh, to be actually worse option than any other lens or two and is it really worth it? Thank you for helping me out uh, as this is particular problem is giving me a headache for more than a week. Uh, kind regards from Jim who lives in Italy, is employed in Ireland but is in fact from the Czech Republic. Well thanks for your um, question and your email Jim. Uh, good questions and we'll get into that. Um, I just want to comment that's pretty cool. You're from Italy, employed in Ireland but from the uh, the Czech Republic. So live in Italy, employed in Ireland from the Czech Republic. You've been uh, three places I would like to go that I've never been. So that's cool. Um, so the 90D, you're already looking at the 90D, even though it's still, you know, kind of vaporware rumor, as we know. Uh, I'm really hoping it's a 4K 80D with a few other enhancements, in which case, by all means, get it. Possible upgrade to the 7D Mark III. A lot of people go that route if they want to stay in the in the uh, APS-C Canon bodies. That's definitely your top-of-the-line APS-C Canon uh, when it comes out. The Mark II would be the, the current top-of-the-line there. And then as far as lenses, um, when you say my list of the best three lenses, I just want to clarify. When I, the, the list I think you're talking about is when I have my top four uh, or maybe I've said three, but the best value lenses. And I just want to, to clarify that because there is a difference between best value and the ultimate best lens. When I have that list where I, I cite the 10 to 18, the 18 to 135, the uh, 50 F1.8 STM, and the 55 to 250 IS STM, those are the best value lenses. I'm not saying they're the best lens out there. I'm saying they're the best value for the money. In other words, for the money, you can't beat them for what they offer. There are better lenses, they just cost a lot more money. And that is where we're going to be going with the answer for you about this Canon 15 to 85. When I pop over to Amazon right now, that Canon 15 to 85 is 799 US. Uh, and that's a lot of money. I think it looks like you can pick it up here for cheaper used, but for brand new for that lens, 799. Um, I think the problem what you're seeing here, why you're not seeing a lot of people recommend it, is certainly why it doesn't hit my best value lenses is for $7.99, you can buy almost all of those other lenses I mentioned, darn close to it. Whereas this what $7.99 is very expensive for a variable aperture zoom. This isn't even a 3.5 to 4.5. This is an f3.5 to 5.6 variable aperture zoom. So it's not fast at all gives you a decent range. That's the only thing it's really got going for it, the fact that it's a 15 to 85. I like that part. I do not like the variable aperture part for the price. If this had been a 15 to 85 f4 IS, then it'd be totally worth $800. It's not worth $800 in my opinion. It's not good value in my opinion when it's a variable aperture zoom. And that's, I think, why. I think that's the answer to your question, why you're not seeing anybody else recommending it really. It's a decent performing lens, no doubt about it, but it's a slow lens for $800. So I would much rather have the Sigma uh, 17-50 to f2.8. Faster lens, less, less range. If I really want more range, I'm going to go with the 18-135. to Gives you even more range on the telephoto end. When I pair that with the 10-18, to I've covered, I'm covered from 10 to 135 and it's still costing me less than that single lens. So there's the crux of the matter there. So you'd have to decide is a little sharper performance, and it's probably negligible. You're starting to really split hairs. But I will give that lens, the 15 to 85, the edge on sharper performance. However, for the price, 
like I said, you could pretty much have all of the other lenses. You could have even the Sigma and probably the other three to go with it. So that's where we're talking about value. So you have to decide for a slower lens, are you willing to pay that much more money for a tad bit sharper? I'm not because those other lenses are good performers and much better price. And that's why you're not seeing other people uh, including that in their recommended lenses. It's too much money for what it is for the price. So uh, I will throw it back to you folks, though, as I always do, to our viewers. Do you agree with me? Do you think that I'm correct? And that's why you're not seeing that recommended a lot. Do you agree with my assessment that for the price it's too much money? Especially, I mean, the, the crux here is, is if it was an f4 constant aperture, it'd be a great value. But for a variable aperture all the way to 5.6, I think that's far too much money for a 15 to 85 crop sensor lens. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Um, what do you think about these lens options? Um, I like Jim's option of going with the Sigma 17 to 50 f2.8 OS. It's a faster lens. It pairs nicely with the 55 to 250. Um, the other option, if you wanted to, would be go with the 18 to 135 Canon, the IS STM. Uh, great lens too. Not as fast, but a longer range. What would you guys do? Let us know on that one as well. Let us know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Always great to hear from you guys helping our viewers when they write in with questions just to get a more rounded opinion. Not just mine, but, you know, you guys chiming in, sometimes pointing out things I might have missed. Thanks for your question, Jim. I'll be looking forward to hearing what everybody has to say in addition to my answer for you. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com. Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. We have a viewer question writing in on the email here. This is entitled, Choosing the Right Camera. This is from Edwin. He says, Hi Matt, I'm planning to make money by taking photographs of small functions like birthday parties and other local functions. The thing is that I lack a camera. I can afford up to $750 to $800. In this range, could you please suggest a camera and some good glass? Your show is very informative and also the presentation is very pleasing. Keep updating new reviews. Thanks for reading the mail. Okay, so thanks for your question, Edwin. Good question. Um, what would you buy if you wanted to start essentially shooting professionally for $750 to $800? Now, I'm going to go against the grain that I would normally say is that you need two bodies because in this price range, um, you could either borrow something or rent something for a second body. But if you're doing birthday parties and local functions, I would probably fake it till you make it here in the sense of for that price, you're not going to really be able to get two decent camera bodies in that price range. Um, to get some good glass too makes it difficult and that's where you're probably going to have to look at the used market. I would probably look at something like a used um, T5i if you could get it for that with a decent lens and add a 50 f1.8. That would probably do you and then as you get more money get a second body for a backup. Um, the other option is you could go even older, something like a T3i, still pretty decent for, for photos, and then upgrade it later. You probably wouldn't lose too much flipping it because it's older. If I was looking at spending that solely on a camera and a lens, um, well, actually, you know what fits that bill pretty closely is this guy right here. So the Canon SL2 um, is a great option. It's new, 24 megapixels. It's essentially a baby ADD. Um, 650 US with the with the uh, kit lens, which is this 18 to 55 here. But you could get the body only, I believe, is about 550, and then it, you could probably find a used Sigma 17 to 50 f2.8 OS for 250 300, and that should get you in your price range. That's probably one of the best options if you want to go with a newer body, and then you can add glass later, add additional backup bodies. Um, but a, a Sigma 17-50 f2.8 OS, you could easily cover events like birthday parties and local functions. And it's also 2.8 constant aperture zoom, so it's going to cover you nicely through um, 
dimmer lighting situations give you a little bit of ability to separate shallow depth of field, get that out-of-focus background. And then the next thing you would do is add the 50 F1.8 STM that's on the, the little uh, SL2 here. Because um, this is a great camera. It's a sleeper camera. It's one of the best values right now. So that's if, I, if, if you can swing the SL2, that's the way I would go. If you want to add more glass and put less money into a camera body, buy something older, like a T3i, T4i, T5i, um, a 50D or a 60D. There's still decent cameras if you get one in good shape. And then you can upgrade it later to an SL2 or up to an 80D, um, something like that, and get more glass when you initially buy it. So that's what I would do, but I'm going to throw that back to our viewers. What would you guys do? Would you go SL2? And limited glass for now, like for instance the Sigma 17-50 f2.8 and cover everything with that, which is doable. Um, and then out of 50, would you go with an older body, a T, T3, one of the older Rebels, T3i, T4i, T5i. Um, maybe you could find a 50D, 60D in there and some glass. Uh, what would you do? Let us know in the comments below what you would do if you were in Edwin's situation, wants to shoot some birthday parties and local functions, and with his budget of $750 to $800. Always great to hear from you guys. Helps round out the answer so that Edwin can get some additional advice, different opinions, gives him more to think about before he makes his decision. Thanks for your question, Edwin. Looking forward to hear what you guys have to say. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com. Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Got a question here on the email from Marcus. Marcus writes in, he says, Hi Matt, I should have written earlier, but here goes. Uh, back to the should have written earlier point. The headline is entitled, Emergency. Urgent advice needed purchase tomorrow morning. I'm not sure I've made your deadline, but I'm going to answer your question for you anyways, because you have an interesting question here. I should have written earlier, but here goes. I really would appreciate your advice. I currently have a Fuji X-Pro2 and a host of lenses, big and wonderful, and also an original Mark I Sony RX100. Here's the problem. The Fuji is so good that I now never use the Sony. But I am going away on a snowboarding trip to Austria in around a couple of weeks, and I don't want to take the Fuji kit as it's simply too big, expensive, and heavy to take on the slopes. I need something small and light and comf controllable. So I've been doing my research, and I have a short list of two cameras that will give me the easy-to-access manual control I yearn for, but don't get with the Sony RX100, and also the benefit of 4K video. The two contenders are both Panasonic, the very pocketable LX10, LX15 here in England, and the other camera is the LX100, which is a bit more of a lump, but appears to have a hell of a lens. At the moment, both cameras are on sale for around L400 for the LX100, or L428 for the LX10, LX15, and in, in, in those parts. A point of detail is the lack of ND filters. The LX100 can take a 43 millimeter screw mount, but the LX1015 will have to resort to higher shutter speeds in bright conditions. But does this even matter? Will anyone notice the faster shutter speed on video? I think what I really want to know is how the image quality will compare. Do they both have great lenses? So any advice you can give me would be hugely appreciated. I thought this may be a good one for your show as these two cameras are close. Oh, just to let you know, this Sony RX100 Mark IV is currently L670 in the UK, so way more expensive, and I wasn't impressed by the fiddly EVF. And I like an aperture ring, so hence my short list. But hey, you may have some other ideas. The camera will be used for scenery, portraits, time-lapse, video, macro, the lot. Very, very much. Hope you can help. P.S. Huge fan. I love your show and the passion of your arguments. If you want to see any of my photos, I am the Max Sinclair on Instagram. Keep up the excellent work, Marcus. Well, thanks for your question, Marcus. Quite a well-thought-out, uh, well-written-out question here. And before I answer it, let me grab one of those cameras. Okay, so this is 
one of your options, the Panasonic LX10, or in your neck of the world, it is the LX15. So Europe, I believe, is this is where they're labeling that, the LX15. I'm not sure why. But um, this is one of my favorite all-time cameras. And the reason for this is that this thing is so amazing in the sense of the lens is so sharp, and it's an F4 lens. It has a decent zoom range. Um, it's got manual controls. It's got a full flip-up screen. I use it a lot for doing run-and-gun video. Um, and I use it a lot just to have in my pocket to supplement photos and things. Um, and the quality on this guy is amazing. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The one-inch sensors that we're getting out of new cameras like this LX10 these days uh, are outperforming early 6 megapixel APS-C sensors like we used to have in, say, the Nikon D100 or the old Canon uh, 10D, I think even the 20D. That might have gone to an 8. But these guys, 20 megapixel, uh, 1 inch, extremely good sensor. This is what I would go with. Um, that's my choice just because I love this thing. Everything about it has enough goodness that, like I said, it's one of my favorite cameras, period, of all time. I just really love this thing. And I would take it over the LX100. As you know, I have owned the LX100, and it's a beautiful little camera, but this is smaller and lighter, more pocketable, and it does better 4K in the sense of it has an F1.4 lens, and I believe the limitations are less on this for the, for the timing. But I just the fact that it's smaller and lighter, I mean, this is a very small, pocketable camera in comparison to the LX100. So that would be my choice right there. That's what I would go with. I love this little guy. I use it a lot, and uh, I'd be lost without it. So I'm going to throw it back to the audience, though. Would you go with an LX100 over an LX10? And why? Is it because of the little bit larger sensor? Keep in mind that all else is not equal here. Yes, the LX100 has a larger Micro Four Thirds sensor, but it's older. So this LX10's newer, smaller sensor is probably much closer to on par with the older Micro Four Thirds sensor in the LX100. I'm not saying it actually beats the LX100, but they're getting pretty close because the tech in these new one-inch smaller sensors is amazing. Plus, it's more megapixels, and the pocketability, you just, it all just rounds it out for me. But what about you guys? What would you guys do? Would you go with an LX10 or an LX15 in Europe uh, over an LX100? Or would you go with an LX100? Let us know what you would do and why. Leave it in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Let's help out Marcus here. Um, we want to help him out, make his decision. And i um, interested to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks for your question, Marcus. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com. Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. We've got a question here on the email. This is entitled Nikon Lens Inquiry. This is from uh, Benj. I hope I'm saying that right. And um, he says, Good day, Matt. I've just started photography with a Nikon D5300. For my lenses, I now have the standard 18-55 to kit lens, the Nikkor 50mm f1.8G, and the Nikkor 55-200 to f4.5-5.6, um, oh no, sorry, F4 to 5.6 VR2. I'm planning on buying another lens and I'm thinking of going for a wide angle lens such as the Nikkor AFP 10 to 20 F4 5 F to 5.6 VR, so variable aperture. Uh, but I'm also thinking of upgrading from the kit lens to the Sigma 17 to 50 F2.8 OS because of its fixed aperture. Which do you think I should buy? The Nikkor 10 to 20 or the Sigma 17 to 50? I've been a follower of your YouTube channel and I love your videos. Please keep it up. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for your question, and I guess one of the things I, I need to say here is that I think um, we need a little more information because you haven't really said what you like to shoot a lot of, and frankly, 
um, there's reasons for either of those. I mean, if you're shooting a lot of landscapes or interiors or things where you might really want or need an ultra wide, the 10 to 20 would be the way to go because it would fulfill and satisfy your needs. Uh, if you're mostly shooting events and portrait work and like weddings and things like that, then the 17 to 50 would be a better option because you don't need an ultra wide and you'd benefit from the constant aperture F28 OS, optical stabilization, their version of VR. So, and I love that lens, by the way, the Sega 1750. For those of you that are regular viewers of the channel, you know that's one of my favorite all-time lenses for a crop sensor body, um, such as, uh, you know, a Nikon 5300 like you have, or a, um, in the Canon side, you can put it on any of the crop sensors, an 80D, 70D, 77D, T7i, you name it. Uh, even on the SL2, it should work just fine. So, it uh, really depends what your needs or your shooting requirements are. If, you know, you've already got a 50 F1.8G, which is a great portrait lens. So if you just shoot the odd portrait and you're doing a lot of landscape or interiors or something, then probably the 10 to 20 from Nikon is the way to go. But if you're mostly doing events like weddings and, and some portrait work, then probably the Sigma 17 to 50 F2.8 OS would suit your needs better. So hopefully that helps you decide, narrow it down based on your needs because that's what you're going to... Um, should be looking at why you would buy either of these lenses. And frankly, I mean, if you if the budget bears, you could add both of them, maybe stagger the purchases. Uh, but I'm going to throw it back to you guys. What do you guys think? Um, do you agree with me that if, depending on what he's shooting, you'd go with the 10 to 20, say outdoors or if, like landscapes, interiors, or if he's doing more, more uh, like wedding work or event work, and especially indoors, the 17 to 50 F2.8 would serve him better from Sigma. Let me know what you guys think. Is there another option? Let us know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Let's help out, Benj. Thanks for your question, Benj. Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com. Hey folks, Matt from artoftheimage.com. I have a question here on the email from uh, Atticle. I hope I'm saying that right. He says, hi Matt, I'm a big fan of yours. Learning a lot from your videos. Thank you. I just got into shooting video and I have a Nikon D5600. Right now I am planning to get a 35mm prime lens considering the Yongnu uh, 35F2 and the Miticon Creator 35F2. I understand that the Miticon is three times more expensive than Yongnu, and the Miticon doesn't have autofocus. Thankfully, I don't need autofocus, as my use case is video only. I just want to choose the sharper and more color accurate one from these two. Would you please give your valued opinion on this? I hope you will. Thanks. And that's Atticle. Hope I'm saying that right. Uh, okay, well, great question. However, I actually have... Uh, I don't have any opinion on either of these because I haven't shot the Yongnu. I've shot the Nikon 35 F2 um, that uh, that Yongnu was basically copied off of. And the Nikkor is awesome, but I don't think the Yongnu is quite as good. I think it's okay, but I don't think it's quite as good. And the Miticon Creator 35 F2, I haven't, uh, haven't shot that, and I really don't know much about it. So this is a situation where uh, if I had to buy something in that range, I would get that 35 from Nikon. Or the the new current DX, the 35 f1.8, which is a, is a darling of a little lens. Um, but if you're looking to go specifically between one of these two, I'm going to throw it back to our viewers. Who of you have shot the Yongnu 35 f2 or the Miticon Creator 35 f2? What's your experience with it? What would you recommend? Um, do you own it? Have you shot it? Let us know. If you've shot both and you can contrast and compare great if you have experience with one or the other let us know what uh, your feelings on it are uh, leave in the comments below It'd be great if you could help out Atticle in this situation like I said I haven't shot out of these lenses so I'm going to throw it back to you guys and hopefully we get some user feedback some hands-on user feedback um, looking forward to seeing that looking forward to hearing your opinions and your user feedback on these lenses um, thanks Atticle stay tuned we'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com
Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Got an email in here from Man Maninder. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, hey, I saw your last video about the Nikon D7200. Loved it. Now the problem. I'm unable to decide between the Canon 77D and the Nikon D7200. I'm on a budget here. If I go for the 77D, then I can afford it with the 18-55 to kit lens and the 50 f1.8 prime lens. And if I choose a 7200, then I can get it with the 18-140 to or 18-105 to kit lens only. No prime lens with this one. The D7100 uh, is almost the same price as the 7200 here. I've used the 33 earlier, the Nikon D3300, borrowed it from a friend for three months. I used it primarily for photography and tried making videos for twice or thrice only. But then, again, I'm going to travel this year a lot, so maybe I'll make more videos, time-lapse, slow lo mo, etc. Help me, buddy. And uh, so that is from Man Minder. I hope I'm saying that right, and thank you for your question. Interesting. Um, I would say that because it sounds like you are interested in doing more video, that I would go with the 77D in this situation, or an 80D. Uh, refurbed at about the same price because you can get them for that too or used. Uh, the reason I would do that is I like the Canon, as I've said before, better for video than I do the 7200. The 7200 is a phenomenal photography camera and I would have no questions or problem recommending it as a solely photo photographic tool. In other words, you just want to shoot photos with it. It's okay for video, but the 77D with its articulated screen and its dual pixel AF, it's just, it's, it's a much better video camera. So, and it's also a very strong, very good competitor in photography. So as soon as you just throw video into the mix, um, the 77D is coming out ahead in my opinion, and that's the route I would go. I would get the 77D. I wouldn't get the 18 to 55 lens. I would somehow finagle it, whether it was a 77D or an 80D refurbed, and I would get the 18 to 135. There's nothing wrong with this lens. Here it is here that came with the, the SL2 that I have sitting there. It's just, I think the 18 to 135, you can usually get it for a little bit more money with a kit or used, and it gives you much more reach, and I'd rather have it. And then I, the 50 mil F18. If this is what you can get for now, the 18 to 55 and the 50 mil F18, no problem. And you can sell the 18 to 55 later and move into uh, the rest. I mean, my favorites of, of the best value lenses from Canon for that camera is a 10 to 18. Love that lens. The... 50 f1.8 STM, which is on the SL2 there. The 55 to 250 IS STM, which is right here. And uh, then I like the 18 to 135. But the setup I have here with the SL2 is with the 18 to 55, as you're suggesting, because that's the kit it came with. So it's an all right setup. I just happen to like the longer reach on the 18 to 135. I think it's a better walk around lens for the focal length, the extra zoom. So that's what I would do. I'm going to throw it back to you guys. What would you do? Do you agree with me? Would you go with a 77D or a used 80D? Even an SL2 I would maybe consider. I, I really like this SL2, by the way. So let me know what you guys would do in the comments below. Um, what would you do and why? Let's help out Man Mender, help him make this decision. Uh, always good for our viewers when they're writing in to get uh, you know advice from various people. Sometimes you bring up points that I hadn't thought of, uh, and then you get to flush it out more when you're making your decision, which is better for our viewer. Thanks again for your questions. Stay tuned. Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com. Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Interesting question here from Deval. I hope I'm saying that right. He says uh, the heading of the email is 85mm Nikon or 42.5mm Panasonic. Now, give me one second. Okay, 85 from Nikon, F18G. Panasonic, 42.5mm, uh, F17. Let's put them there for a second. We'll finish the question. Hey, Matt, I have both the Panasonic G85 and the Nikon D7100. I'm trying to choose between the Nikon 85mm F18 or the Panasonic 42.5 F17. I was wondering what the difference in bokeh would be like as I primarily use my Nikon for photos due to higher resolution and my Panasonic for video. I understand the Panasonic has dual IS with this lens. It is much lighter, but was wondering about bokeh and overall IQ between the two. Also, would the Panasonic lens be more useful in video too? Kind, kind regards, Deval. Thank you for your question and a little bit of a loaded question here because we're, we're talking about a Micro Four Thirds system compared to a Nikon system, but you do own both and it's a valid question. Um, 
frankly, I would go with um, a 50 if I was shooting, if I was, if I was trying to get that focal range on the 7100. The 85, it's nice on the 7100, but you're looking at closer to like a 130 or something with that 1.5 crop factor. So um, more expensive, and you could get a 50 F18G or a 50 F14D on the 7100, and I think it would give you closer to what this is doing on the G85. So the 42.5, because that's essentially an 85 mil lens, right? Two times crop factor. So that's the two lenses there, and, and there is quite a difference. And if I was going to take these on a backpack, I'd rather have the G85 and this little guy. Um, if I'm going for, though, like you're mentioning higher resolution and bokeh and overall IQ, yeah, you're going to get um, the bokeh actually on this is phenomenal. I wouldn't give the Nikon the edge just for bokeh. They're both beautiful performing lenses for bokeh. But this little 42.5 from Panasonic, the F17, has some of the nicest bokeh I've ever seen. The difference is going to be between the two is that because you have an APS-C sensor versus micro four thirds, you're going to get a little more shallow depth of field using the 85 than you are using the 42.5. You're also going to get a little more compression because it's longer, right? Field of view, effective field of view is longer. It's a longer lens, period. So um, overall IQ, um, so, okay, so bokeh, I like them both. And actually, the, the Panasonic is one of my all-time favorite prime portrait lenses, and I love the bokeh. So that, that's saying something right there, okay? That said, too, I just I love the 85, especially on full frame, on the D850 or on the D610, D750, you name it, 8, 810, everything I've shot this on. It's a beautiful lens. Um, so for bokeh, I'm, it's a toss-up for me. Actually, I, I almost lean towards the 42.5. I just I love how tiny and amazing this little lens is. Uh, plus, um, it has the the ability for IS, right? So you've got um, this is a is a power OIS lens, um, and then you've got the the IS in the body for the G85. So there's an advantage right there. Overall IQ, I'm going to say that because of the larger sensor in the 7100 paired with uh, a full frame lens that you're using the center of, you know, because it's a crop, um, you're going to get better overall IQ out of the 7100 and the 85. So, uh, but that's not to knock this guy because this little 42.5 F17 on the G85 delivers phenomenal portraits. So in real world shooting, I love it. And I would be, it's a hard, hard press to say which one I would go with there. I mean, G85 is smaller and lighter and I love that lens. If I was pairing this with the 7100, it doesn't have quite the shine for me. I would, I would actually put a 50 on. Um, but if I had the 85 on a full frame, then I'd be, I'd be really loving that too. Um, so it's tough. Um, because you're thinking about doing video, yeah, that is useful for video. It's a little long for some people for video, but as long as the, the fact that it's an 85 equ equivalent is still useful for you as far as the field of view, then that probably turns the tide towards the Panasonic in the sense of you're going to be using your G85 more than your 7100 for video, so then you probably want to buy the Panasonic. So in the end... For specifically for you, I'm thinking Panasonic 42.5, and I do love this little darling. Um, however, I'm going to throw it back to you guys, to our viewers, our regular audience, and even if you're not regular, if you have experience with either of these, or if you have an informed opinion, let us know in the comments below. Let's help out Duvall. Which way would you go? He's got a 7100 from Nikon. Would you go with an 85 F18? Or would you go with a 50 like I suggested? Or... He's also got the G85, which I'm filming this with right now. Would you put the 42.5, one of my favorite all-time lenses, one of my favorite all-time portrait lenses, on the G85 and go with that? Because it does, as I said, tip the scales because he wants to shoot video with it. Let us know what you guys would do and why. Comments below. Let's discuss it. Let's help out Duvall. Thanks for your question. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at rtheimage.com.